once. And that's what just made me feel better. Like that I was really just kind of stressing. And a lot of the problems that I create for myself really are in my head. So, yeah, for that, I'm thankful. Um, I definitely got New Year's resolutions because I really need to get this weight off. And I definitely need to go back to school and graduate. Uh, definitely. It's only 11 units. And I'm going to just chip away at it. One semester at a time, and I'll be done by the end of next year. And I'll be in really great shape and back to 200 pounds. Because I hopped on the scale, and the limit was like 400, and that shit didn't work. So I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I bench press a lot, but I got fat, and I let myself go. <laughs> That's just not good. That's probably why my hey, indigestion right. hurts so bad. But anyway, yeah. I'm just I'm thankful I had that experience. Because I really, like, you really need to go back home and reconnect with family. Everybody should make that pilgrimage to where you're from, where you were born, where you grew up, even if you don't remember a lot of it, because there's stuff about my childhood I don't remember that my aunts filled me in on. And I found out that on my grandma's side that her great-grandmother was an African princess who came here when she was 24. So, yeah, I found out a lot of stuff about my family. And I'm thankful for that. And sorry this is long-winded and emotional and sappy, but I told y'all shit. I told y'all this shit ahead of time. So here goes Pete to uh, shit all over it. And by the way, yeah, I'm going to let him say it. A couple things here, man. I got something for both of you guys. But, um, yeah, man. Thanks for sharing that story. Honestly, man, one of, one of my highlights of Christmas this past year was really... Like f- for for Christmas, I got my little my middle little brother, um, who's actually been a badass kid lately. But besides that, um, yeah. I got him some some speed ladders for um for for Christmas, and so I was just kind of showing him how to do some basic ladder drills and like basic cone drills and stuff like that. And like honestly, like it was really really fun, just because like I always think about like like I mean Wu Wu started with me. Wu knows what I was like when i started doing ladders and agility like i was trash but by the end of it like i was pretty good like especially for my size and i got a lot quicker and faster and so i always wonder like oh what if i would have started a couple years earlier so now that he's in seventh grade i got him got him working on that and he he seems to like it so he's actually a kind of a natural at it so I'm, i'm pretty hopeful there but regardless it's it's good just to pass on some of that knowledge that I've acquired and just to share my experience with him. But on that same note, as far as like family and like going home and all that sort of stuff, I think one thing that I kind of realized this past year is coaches say it all the time, right? Like shit happens and, and like you, you get sad and you're kind of like, Oh, where am I in life? Like I need to change. Like, I need to be more focused. I need to be more strategic. I need to be more efficient. And, like, that's kind of the thing that I kind of went through this year, like, where I just got overwhelmed from doing way too much. And, like, I just kind of took a step back and relaxed and, like, didn't do too much. And, honestly, I regret it because I don't feel like I should have ever changed my strategy because I've gotten this far by doing too much, by – maximizing who I am by battling through adversity and like it was cool to take a step back and to have some time but now it's now I'm at the point to where I'm ready to get back to being myself the person who does do too much and stretches himself too thin because honestly like realistically like I love that feeling of like working 12 hour days and coming home and having nothing left in the tank like that's that shit like gets me off that shit makes me feel complete that shit makes me feel fulfilled as a person like maybe i'm a workaholic maybe i'll die young but either way i'd rather go out trying to be myself and who i am than trying to you know make myself fit into a corporate mindset i guess you could say but on a lighter note Let's bring it full circle. My other second favorite part about Christmas was being able to see the new Spider-Man movie into the Spider-Verse, which, I mean, if you look at the Rotten Tomato reviews, 
it's a highly acclaimed movie. It has great reviews. But honestly, but with the animation and stuff like that, and it not being Marvel, you never know what to expect. So my expectations weren't too high. Going in there, it's kind of like a hybrid, like, claymation, animation, comic book style. Like this, But the cinematography is, like, amazing and beautiful. And the music is on point and, like, it's, like, brings into the culture but like brings it into a great context of where it like actually makes sense it's not like uh what was that movie with ryan gosling and emma stone where it was like just like rick ross just was playing randomly La La land no it was the other one gangster land or something i know which one you're talking about yeah and it was just like a 1920s movie and they're just like playing rick ross in it and it was like that iPhone this picture. is cool but it also doesn't make sense but yeah man spider-verse was honestly one of the best movies i've seen this year and i hate to say it but it was probably better than black panther when you actually just look at it from a movie perspective and not not all the cultural i get it black black panther had a big cultural impact all the imagery was like really needed and changed the game and honestly without it there might not be an into the spider verse but if you take the two movies and grade them just in a vacuum just from pure entertainment, pure aesthetic, pure storyline, like the new Spider-Man movie, I think, wins nine times out of ten. Just from the fact that it was able to take something that had already been done multiple times and not only make fun of it, but like completely flip it on its head and give a completely new, different take that expanded across generations, which... I saw it with my brothers and sisters. Kenny saw it with his older uncle. Like, And I had my Spider-Man socks on. And everybody enjoyed it. Like, That's just the kind of power that that movie had. And Vince Staple was on both soundtracks, so that's good enough for me. And I hate Post Malone. Yeah. But Sunshine is a really great song. Sunflower. Shout- Sunflower, my bad. Yeah, that's just stuck in shout my head. Shout out to Sway Lee and shout out to Slim Jimmy, wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all right, man. So that's about it. You can catch me on Twitter at Pete Certified. Me on Twitter at Ozo Grande. Talk, um, shitting on that African pastor who pretty much finessed everybody. In the pretty oh shit, this African pastor. He he literally need some first responders. In here. <laughs> no, I need a first responder. Shit, dog. I'm never drinking that much orange juice in one sitting again. I can't like. It hurts to talk. The acid buildup. But yeah, man. At TDs underscore tangents, Instagram, Twitter. You can catch us on your favorite podcast app. Shout out to FPC Radio. Shout out to the Good News Radio Squad. Shout out to the Woo. Good News Radio Station. Shout out to X Squad Affiliates. I'm going to say it one more time because I didn't say it at the top of the show and we're, contract- we're contractually obligated to I feel do like that. You did, but okay. So shout out to FPC Radio. Shout out to X Squad Affiliates. Bruh. We fuck with you. Thank you for always replaying us. Thank Sh- you for always believing in us. And yeah, man, shout out to your favorite podcast app. You can listen, share it. And actually, which I saw you did today on Instagram, which is pretty cool, where you can actually like put the link to Spotify in there. So maybe I'll stop slandering Spotify now. Because I've been doing that for a while, by the way. I, uh, this like is the sharing, first, this is the first time I saw Spotify. And this is the first story. time I saw, saw it with the link to click it and listen to it directly on Spotify, which I don't have Spotify, so it didn't work for me. But yeah. The concept was cool. He really hates Spotify. But shout out to that African <laughs> preacher who finessed everybody at his church and giving him money. And, oh, man. Shit's hilarious. Y'all got to read that story. All right, man. Touchdowns and tangents. You know what it is. Shout out to Wu for coming through again. Shout out to Wu, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Coming to the Lions then as a Cowboys fan is never easy. <laughs> <laughs> we really didn't make that many Cowboys jokes. Yeah, you guys were nice today. Yeah, it's a new year. And I'll be covering the Lakers for the rest of the season, hey. so you can follow me on Twitter and see that coverage there. No that conflict. should be interesting. No conflict of interest required. Should be pretty interesting. I'll just leave it at that. Conflict of interest sold separately. But uh, anyway, we love y'all. Have a uh, great rest of the year. Don't do nothing crazy. Make it to 2019, please. Don't do stupid shit. <laughs>